Cricket presents The Warm-Up, and thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Ted Madd. Well, this is it. One last week of the regular season, and we have some really important games on the schedule. Let's get you ready for some football. We've gone through 10 weeks of the regular season, and yet, with one week left, some teams still have some work to do. Let's preview some of the more important games in the lineup presented by Sochil Chips and Salsa. It hasn't meant that much in the past several years, but the rivalry between LD Bell and U.S. Trinity most certainly means something this week. The Trojans have won the last 24 meetings between these two, but there hasn't been as much on the line as there will be this Thursday night at Pennington. Trinity is 3-6 on the year and 3-3 three and three in district play. Not something you expect to hear when talking about one of the area's perennial powers. But the Trojans have won three of their last four, and that potent ground attack has started to gain steam. Meanwhile, the Blue Raiders began the year 5-0, but have lost three of their last four and now need a win over their biggest rival, plus some help. Bell is sparked by their running back, Gracian Anto, who should surpass 1,000 yards this year. Even if the Blue Raiders don't make the playoffs, a 7-3 season and a win over their hated rival would be a nice feather in their cap. Not all games are win and you're in type games. Some district titles are on the line too, including 7-5A Division II. Melissa visits Lovejoy Friday night and both teams are undefeated in district play. It will be a battle between two of the Metroplex's most efficient offenses. Melissa has scored six touchdowns or more in eight of their nine games. Trevor Ham has thrown for over 2,200 yards and 32 touchdowns for the Cardinals, and his main target has been Carson Maynard, who averages over 20 yards per catch. On the other side, Lovejoy has four Division I receivers in their locker room, including LSU-bound Kyle Parker, who has 53 catches on the year. On the other side, Parker Livingstone has 43 grabs. The Leopards average 511 yards of offense per game. This will be a shootout. Enjoy the authentic flavors of ancient recipes. So thin, so crisp, so good, so chill. Come into Cricket Wireless and get any LTE Android free when you switch. Smile, you're on Cricket. Grapevine's Parker Polk has been an offensive dynamo for the Mustangs since he was a sophomore. We caught up with the running back on the recruiting trail. I have an name is Parker Polk. I'm a running back at Grapevine High School. Uh, I'd say the most important thing is probably the, the culture around the team, um, the, the coaches and the relationships they have with the players, and then uh, location probably does factor into it uh, as third. I'd probably say, I don't use it as much this year because I'm at running back, but um, probably route running. Um, I've worked on that a lot throughout my high school career and even middle school. and. Something that's definitely gotten better. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do is run crisp routes. It's pretty fun and a uh, very satisfying thing to do in football. So, yeah. Um, it's been an awesome experience. Uh, our culture is amazing. Uh, we have great coaches that pour into us and uh, make us better football players, but also better men and have great relationships with them and um, I've met all my best friends through football so it's, it's been a great overall experience. Um, in the winter I love to go skiing. I um, love doing that either with my family or with friends and then um, any other time I love just hanging out with my friends um, playing any type of sports but just doing anything competitive with my friends we get we get into it so yeah. Um, I'd say I want to be remembered as someone who showed up every day and uh, worked his butt off and did the extra work after practice and um, a guy that encouraged his teammates and uh, just tried to serve serve others throughout his time And because uh, at the end of the day the stats aren't going to be what's remembered so I just want to be remembered as a good teammate. Come into Cricket Wireless and get nationwide 5G plus a free 5G phone when you switch. Smile, you're on Cricket. 
Look for our cameras at a lot of big games this week, but unfortunately we can't be at them all. Let's take a look at some games you need to watch for in the hype. A big 10-6A game pits Royce City against Mesquite Horn. Both teams' last wins were upsets over Rockwall Heath, and now the two of them are playing for a second place finish in district play. That would mean a home playoff game. It's especially shocking that Royce City finds themselves in this position as it's their first season in Class 6A. The Bulldogs had a 500 non-district campaign, but have gone four and one against 10 6A foes. You can thank Sam Mitchum and Kenneth Spring for most of their success. Mitchum, Roy City's halfback, has rushed for 1,400 yards and 12 touchdowns, while Spring has thrown for 16 touchdowns and zero interceptions. Meanwhile, Horn has flipped their record from last year. They've gone from two and seven to seven and two, and they've done it with head coach Courtney Allen's belief and in defensive intensity. The Jags have given up fewer than 18 points a game in their four district wins. They'll have their work cut out for them against Royce City. Mansfield Summit will take on Ennis for playoff positioning this Friday. Both teams are in the postseason, but this game will determine who finishes in third and who finishes fourth. Why is that important? Well, the fourth place team will travel to defending 5A Division II state champ South Oak Cliff in the first round of the playoffs. So yeah, it's important. Ennis started the season one and four, but have picked up wins in three of their last four games. The Lions haven't beaten a team with a record over 500, and Summit is sitting at 5-4. Look for quarterback Jackson Gilkey to show out for Ennis. As for Summit, when they are victorious, they put up ridiculous offensive numbers, but when they lose, they're not scoring more than 27. Joseph Williams is nine yards away from 1,000 for the year, and the Jags will need Williams to get those nine, plus much more, to get this win. Last week, the Bowie Volunteers won our defensive title belt. We talk about how they did it and who could win the belt this week in the buzz. Bowie took on Lamar with the last playoff spot in 8-6A on the line. In wet condition, the Vols held Lamar to 139 yards of total offense and put the game away in the second half with back-to-back -back defensive touchdowns. The 56-13 win was more than enough to earn Bowie our defensive title belt. This week, Parish Episcopal could be in line for a title belt. Episcopal takes on Plano Prestonwood for a chance to be the number one seed in the TAPS playoffs. The Panthers have already beaten Texas Power's Alito and China Springs and has allowed only 19 total points in four TAPS games. That's going to do it for today's show. For even more high school football content, be sure to follow us on our social media accounts, including Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm Ted Madden, and I hope we got you warmed up for all the action.